it's your favorite cousin again, and it's almost time to blow out my birthday candles. Hiya, huns. Your favorite cousin is back, and I'm celebrating another trip around the sun. A lot has happened in the past year, but no one who tried to kill me actually succeeded, so I'm in the mood to celebrate. I'm at the Velveteens because I heard they had some presents for me, and oh yeah, it's Ms. Velveteen's birthday on Friday too. I'm one day younger than she is. I also brought the wine because I'm feeling generous, and I even created a special cocktail for them. Since they will probably never share it with you, I will right now. To make it, all you do is combine two ounces of tequila, one half ounce ginger liqueur, and three quarters of an ounce fresh lime juice. Shake with ice, strain into a glass, rim with Merlot salt, and top with a really nice dry red. I was gonna make a birthday cake too, but have you ever tried to make a cake? It is so much work. Even with the mix, I got tired just looking at the box. So I went out and got us an ice cream cake, which is better anyway. So anyway, happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Glendora and Ms. Velveteen. Happy birthday to us. So anyway, I said I would answer some questions that you have for me, and I have to say, these are some really good questions. There's some important stuff here, so here goes. Marcus asks, Dear Cousin Glendora, the only thing sadder than spilled wine is spilled wine on new white cotton bed sheets. What's the best way to get out the stain? I'm toying with the idea of just soaking them in Merlot so they're all the same color, but that seems like such a waste. Well, if you're going to drink wine in bed, I highly recommend that you match your wine to your sheet color. A dark color will go a long way to hide those little stains. But if you are determined to have white sheets, I would say that rather than try to get the stains out yourself, you should find the best dry cleaner in town and treat them really well. You could get those stains out yourself, but that's so much work. And Marcus, you have better things to do with your time. Next up, Hen wants to know, Dear Glendora, my roommate ate my artisan olives. They cost $35 a jar and you can only get them in England. He doesn't think he should have to repay me. How would you get revenge? I'm looking for a Glendora level of revenge. Hen, this is an important one that you can use in a lot of different situations. You find the scariest looking guy you know and you invite him over when your roommate will be home. You will leave the room and this scary looking guy will start a conversation with your roommate about the olives and just casually mention that it would be a real shame if anything happened to him as a result of stealing your olives. It's very important that the scary guy not threaten him, just say that it would be terrible if something happened to him. I guarantee you that not only will this person never steal from you again, but you will see that $35 faster than you can say accidental death. Brian asks, Dear Cousin Glendora, other members of my extended family are coming for a dinner party next week and they don't belong to the same political party I do. Which wine would you recommend to get them or me drunk faster? Brian, as you know, I have a lot of experience in this area. I know you probably don't want to talk to them any more than you absolutely have to, but Find out from another relative which wine they prefer and buy a great deal of that. The more they like it, the faster they will gulp it down, especially if they didn't have to pay for it. And the same applies for you as well. Get a bunch for you and keep it hidden so that they can't get to it because you do not want to run out of your wine while they're still there. Next, Ray asks, Dear Cousin Glendora, 
how do I offer to serve wines at my dinner party, but keep the good one away from the neophytes who would just as well drink white sin? Ray, this is a great question. Pick yourself up some fancy looking carafes and you can fill them with whatever you want. You could put the less expensive wines in a carafe at their end of the table and you could fill a nice carafe with your favorite at your end of the table and they will never know the difference, but your wallet will. Next up, Chaz asks, Dear Cousin Glendora, my uncle orders white zin every time we take him out to dinner. It's so embarrassing, I want to duck under the table. What are our options? Chaz, you've seen my father, so you know I feel your pain. You could announce ahead of time that you're buying wine for the table, and I think he will probably appreciate that and drink whatever you order, especially if he doesn't have to pay for it. However, if he insists on having his white zen, you just roll your eyes and keep being your fabulous self. We all have one of those in our family. And finally, Suze asks, Dear Cousin Glendora, any new boyfriends on the horizon? I had decided I was going to make 2020 the year of me and not pursue any boyfriends, but I do have a date for Valentine's Day. He owns several convenience stores here in town. I met him when I went in one day for my easy cheese and he had come in to fire a manager. We'll see what happens. He knows that it's my birthday on Saturday as well as Valentine's Day, so this is a really good opportunity for him to lavish gifts and attention on me. I will let you know what happens. So anyway, that's it. Happy birthday to Ms. Velveteen. Happy birthday to me and happy Valentine's Day to all of you. They'll be back on Thursday with another Liquored Up Live broadcast, but don't worry, I'll see you again real soon. Thank you.